name's Brogan. Lieutenant Brogan. For 20 years, I was with the NYPD. Now? Well, let's just say I've transferred to another precinct. temple is exquisite, Sister Maverick. Thank you, my icon. I was guided by your spirit in its design. Not mine, I'm afraid. I could not create a floor, let alone an entire temple. Is it not impressive, Brother Temple? It is impressive, but I'm not at all surprised. Sister Nevik has always been full of designs. Behold the eternal flame, symbol of our faith from its humble origin centuries ago to its new beginning on this day. We hereby consecrate this temple to the spirit of pyrism, the purity of fire, Flame without end. Let it be so. Let it be so. traitor in our midst, a heretic who pretends to share our sacred views, but who is motivated by power and greed. He is false to the fire. He has no fire in his heart, but there shall be. Is me riding a Kirkuan. P.S. We ate it for dinner. Oh, <laughs> two weeks of no way, and the guys finally lost it. I don't think how they never had it. <laughs> now, one thing, he's gonna kick himself for missing this one. Oh, I don't know. Spontaneous combustion, see it all the time.
Never seen anything like it. There was no physical contact, nothing out of the ordinary. Tookie, a woman pointed a finger and a man burst into flames. I'd say that was out of the ordinary. She's a priest, Lieutenant. Sister Nevik Brock, the Icar Vedra's right hand. Uh, what's an Icar Vedra? The Icar is the Pyre spiritual leader. He's an extraordinary man. You a Pyrus, Tookie? I guess I'm looking for the answers without knowing all the questions. <laughs> Sounds like what we do for a living. Tendal Kaliki was a good man. I, I want nothing. You need to relax. The herbs will help. I loved him like a son. And he thought you were a fool. Brother Calamandro. Forgive me, my Icar. I cannot remain silent any longer. To your face, he was one way. Behind your back, another. Is this so? It's your own goodness which blinds you to the evil of others. And you said nothing. You know the words of the Daskal. There is justice in the fire. I'm sorry to disturb you, my Icar, but the police, they wish to interview you. You rest. I'll take care of this. See you back at the station house, all right? Uh, Lieutenant Brogan? This is uh, Sister Nevik Brock. She's the one who, uh, well, uh, you. What the officer is trying to say is somehow I became the medium for divine intervention. I see. Um, you don't think you could be a little more specific? You may find it difficult to believe, but a miracle occurred here earlier. Tendal Kaliki was purified by the eternal flame. In his heart, he betrayed us, and his heart betrayed him. Lieutenant. I refuse to believe that Brother Tendal was a heretic. I've known him since I came here as a seeker. He was a good, kind man. Is it possible that anybody here considered him a threat? Yes, tell us, Sister Fancher. Maybe you are aware of something I am not. No, Sister Nevik. Now that you've seen our temple's soul, perhaps you'd like to see the brain. We oversee many technical details there. Tell you what. Why don't you take officers Orn and Castle? Yes, of course. Follow me. Anything? Zilch. Huh. way behind the wall. Go stand in the spot where the priest was killed. No problem, Lieutenant. All right, I'm here. Yeah, so I see. This all looks pretty sophisticated. Uh, not really. Just normal security screens. Processes to control the temple's exterior illumination, that sort of thing. We are very lucky to have Brother Kem and his special expertise. Can I help you, officer? Brother Calamandro. Yeah, what's all this? These tanks contain fuel for the flames outside the temple. Or did you think that was a miracle also? <laughs> I don't believe in miracles. Pity. At this point, given the condition of the remains, the coroner can only determine that Kaliki burned to death. Ah, oh, well, now, that's a revelation, isn't it? And he was pretty sure that the fire began in Kaliki's heart. Has he enlightened us as to how that could have happened? Afraid not. Have you any ideas? Could be microwaves, possibly delta waves. Neither would be detectable in an autopsy, but that's only speculation, of course. There is at least one other possibility, Captain. Took. The Daskal, the Pyrus Bible, tells the story of a disciple whose heart burst into flames because his thoughts were impure. I'm not quite sure how to respond to that. Uh, Carson, um, 
I noticed a small diameter hole in one of the altar room walls. It looks like it was lined up with the spot where Kaliki was standing. Well, microwaves would only need a pinpoint to do the job. Has anyone found a microwave generating device? We searched the place from top to bottom, nothing. Then we have no hard evidence, do we, Lieutenant? Uh, no, sir. Look, people, we're treading a fine line here. These pirates are protected by the laws governing freedom of religious practice. If they cry foul, I don't need to tell you how difficult our job will become. Took. you're a member of this cult, correct? Not really, sir. It was only my second visit, and it's not exactly a cult. Whatever it is, I want you to keep your eyes open whenever you're there. Remember, you're a police officer, 26 hours a day. Yes, sir. There's one other thing, Captain. Kaliki's feet have been burned before. They were scarred over and calloused. The coroner doesn't know what to make of it. Well, it's something. Ah, let's invite the Brock woman in for a chat. Perhaps she can enlighten us. And this one couldn't tell you what you needed to know? I only recently became a Seeker, Sister Nevik. Ah, as Seekers are not official members of our order. If they choose to join us, then they become initiates. After much work and study, an initiate becomes an acolyte. Like Brother Calamandro? Yes. A very few of us, like Brother Tendal and myself, are called to become priests. Mm. Maybe it's just me, but uh, what's all this got to do with Tenokaliki's feet? Every priest must undertake periodic fire walks over molten lava to prove the strength of our belief. As a result, all priests have scarred and blackened feet. Thank you, Miss Brock. Uh, Sister Nevik is my correct title. Sister. Nevik, thank you for coming in to talk to us. You really think that I killed Brother Tendall, don't you? Pyrism is a benevolent belief, Sergeant. We have no wish to harm anyone, not even a traitor. Well, Lieutenant is my correct title, sister, and somebody sure as hell harmed Tendal Kalihi. Is it so impossible for you to believe that he might have done it to himself? That a heart in conflict with itself might just explode in flames? Yeah, it is. And how did you know his heart was the source of the fire? The Daskal says it was so. You might try reading it sometime, Lieutenant. Then you too might find the fire. You're not actually going to go through with a fire ceremony for Kaliki. Now that the authorities have returned his remains, Yes. But what will the congregation say? Perhaps they will say that it is the proper thing to do. Or that you are going against the Daskal. And what will you say? It doesn't matter what I say. I'm only one. But it is difficult to explain why you feel compelled to honor a heretic. Because my heart is unconvinced. To me, Lindel Kaliki will always be innocent. You heard what Kalamandro said. Kaliki spoke against you. If he had things to say against me, he would have said them to me. Brother Tendal will be granted a full fire ceremony. He lived as a loyal pirist. He will be remembered as one. I warn you, my Icar. If you go through with this, it could divide the church. So, sister, what are my choices? If I do as my conscience dictates, ah, uh, yes, I could divide the church. But if I ignore my conscience, I will be a leader in name only. <laughs> Better, I think, a feeble-minded like our Vedra than a cowardly one. You worry too much. Because, my Icar, you worry too little. Guilty. 
I have sinned. Brother Tendal. I sought not piety, but gold and glory. I am unworthy. May the fire forgive me. She told you, old man. Maybe now you'll believe her. I'm not questioning what you saw, Tok. I just want to know how it was done. Well, I have questioned it, Captain. And I'm pretty sure I found the answer in the Daskal. You know, Took, we've uh, programmed slow-mo to reconstruct voices. Maybe the pirates did something similar. Don't patronize me, Lieutenant. I know what I saw. Look, I know you're skeptical. But sometimes you gotta believe in something bigger, something greater. Tookie, I'm just a coffer, not a theologian. But I'm a tough old nut to crack. It's my nature. So, uh, humor me and, uh, keep looking around, huh? Yes, sir. May I go now? Yeah. Think I should take her off the investigation? Nah, she'll be okay. She just wants us to keep an open mind. What about you? Are you a believer? Certainly not in piracy. In anything? Well, if uh, Haldane didn't get back from vacation pretty soon, I believe that I'm going to drown in all the paperwork that's piling up on her desk. <laughs> Why are we questioning the authority of the Icar Vedra? The poor man is senile. How dare you? Because someone must. The Icar is old. So old he cannot even recognize the omens that were foretold. Were they omens, Brother Calamandro? Or something else. A false prophet set aflame by his own evil. A corpse who confesses his sins from the other side. A child can recognize such signs. And I say that the Icar Vedra is our appointed leader. It is he and he alone who has the power to recognize the omens. Sister Nevik, what do you say? I don't know. I admit I'm torn. I love and respect the Icar Vedra, but even I can't ignore the signs. Perhaps the day of immolation is near. We've all seen the signs. Only the Icar is blind. And who would you have replace him? You, brother? Me. I will never be loved enough to lead. But there is one among us who could. One through whom the fire has spoken. No, Brother Kalamandra, thank you, but my loyalty is to the Icar Vedra. Your loyalty, Sister Nevik, shouldn't be to a man. It should be to the fire. Man, this stuff is creepy. It's all fire this and fire that. May you find the fire. May the fire be with you. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah, they believe the end of the world is coming. They call it the day of imitation. Immolation, brainless. Matt. Anyway, the guys at school think it's dumb. They just goof on it. Yeah? What? I told you, it's dumb. It's silly. Let, Let it, it be, be so. so. Come on, Dad, get virtual. You don't believe this stuff. No, but there might be things I do believe that the pirates think are silly and dumb. That doesn't mean I want them laughing at me. Why are you just saying that, Daddy? Am I? So you agree with them? I think what your father is saying is that beliefs are a very personal thing, maybe even a sacred thing, whether you agree with them or not. As long as they're not harming anyone, you respect other people's beliefs, even if you think they're dumb. The same way you want them to respect your beliefs. I get it. So it means if I believe I should go downtown to that reality arcade with the Nazi, you'd respect my beliefs? <laughs> yeah, we'd respect it. But actually letting you do it, I believe not. <laughs> nice try, man. I was so close. <laughs> Have some relish. Have some tongs. Uh, relish? Fredo, what's up? Got a call on hold from a sister, Fancher. She's down at the Pyrus Temple. She asked for you, said it was urgent. Patch her through. Sister Fancher? Lieutenant, I need to talk to you. I'm listening. No, not here. It's not safe. 
Is there somewhere, not the station house, some place we can meet privately? Here, sister. There he is. Thank goodness. Purify her. Damn right I'm taking it personally. They killed Fancher and they almost nailed me in the bargain. She could have been on a suicide mission. Yeah, you didn't talk to her. Well, maybe it was an accident. So could be right. We found nothing in the wreckage that indicates sabotage. Yeah, right. An accident. Just like Tendo Kalinki's death was a miracle. Bottom line here, people, we've got no facts. Just coincidences, huh? Like my grandpa used to say, if there wasn't such a thing... We wouldn't need a word for you. Well, I don't believe in coincidences, and I don't believe in miracles. I'm telling you, Fancher knew something, and when she tried to tell me, they eliminated it. Ah, speculation, coincidences. Call it what you will. It still adds up to nothing. Hey, how you doing, Haldane? Good to see you, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Welcome back, Haldane. Yeah. Let me guess. Another Groska? Glad to have you back, Haldane. But let's get back to the matter at hand. Obviously, there is something going on at that temple. I've decided to put some people in there and find out what it is. Uh, Captain Nevik Brock was in the station house. There's no telling who she saw or who she might remember. Well, it's not exactly true. There's one person we know she didn't see. Hey, no problem. Working undercover or undercovers is my specialty. Always a consummate professional, Haldane. Did you say consummate? Okay, knock it off, you two. As a matter of fact, Haldane, you've always been a part of my plan. Cool. Sounds like fun. The idea isn't to have fun. The idea is to gather information. As your partner, I've arranged to borrow an officer from the 38th Precinct. You all know my daughter, Samina. It's called Time, Temporary Immersion Memory Education. I've heard of it, but it's never actually been used in the field, has it? No. It did cause some adverse side effects in early simulations. Such as? Oh, potential brainwave anomalies. Something you don't have to worry about, Haldane. Oh. Be back in a flash. You kids get to know each other. Look, I just want to be treated like any other police officer. Except Jane Castle, that is. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, touchy. Look, whatever Castle said about me, don't believe it. Unless, of course, it was good. But so what about you, huh? I don't really know anything about you except the fact that, well, your father was not real excited that you became a police officer in the first place. Forget about my father. <laughs> That's not real easy to do. Okay. I spent two years at Demeter University on an athletic scholarship before applying to the academy. Married once, for about five minutes. No kids, no pets. Anything else that you might want to know? No, not if you don't want to tell me. 
I guess you think I'm just some kind of excess baggage. No, not really. Look, I just don't want to have to worry about protecting your butt, okay? Haldane, I don't even want you to think about my butt, much less worry about protecting it. Okay, we're all set. We've downloaded everything ever written about pyrism, including the DAS pool. Come morning, you'll be a couple of walking encyclopedias. We're gonna learn all of it in one night. That plus details of your new personal histories. Haldane, you're about to become Tate Huxley, Earth Studies professor. Samina, you're Kilmer Worsham, a techno-physicist from Dana. Uh, where was this thing when I was taking differential calculus? to dream. Aye, there's the rope. As seekers, you've expressed your undying faith in the fire. Now, you're ready to begin your time as initiates. It won't be easy. Your faith will be constantly tested. And in the end, some of you will find that merely saying the fire is within you won't make it so. Hello. You wish to contribute something? Uh, yes. Uh, I was just about to tell the sister about the inspiration for the Eternal Flame. Pray continue. Okay. Uh, well, when the Prophet Agora was banished to the land of ice, he was given only one match and a small pile of kindling, but he also had faith. And a year later, when that banishment ended, that small pile of kindling was still burning. You know your Daskal well, Seeker. Tate. Then perhaps you can tell us why it is that our temples are built with such a distinctive shape. Uh, yes, of course, because the... Because the... Uh... I, you know, I can't seem to remember that one. Because, in the second book of Daskal, chapter 6, it is written that the pyramid is the shape which most closely resembles our holy flame. Yes, well, thank you, Brother Calamandro. Actually, I believe it was chapter 5. Brother Kem here will show you to your assigned cells. I suggest you relax and meditate. Tonight, you will witness a ceremony marking the end of your time as seekers and your introduction to the temple as initiates. Firewall. You said something, Seeker Tate. Me? No. No, Brother Calamandro. Ten to one, it's the firewall. our contact turned up anything on Tate Huxley? Not yet. He, uh, he appears to be legitimate. Why are you so interested in this guy? Because I don't like him. Whatever. We have other ways to obtain information. Good. Use them. Initiates, behold, 
wondrous marvels that unwavering faith permits. trying. Yes, but I can blame you for pulling that idiot stunt. Look, I saw you do it and I thought it was, uh, I don't know. Uh, mind over matter? Ah, exactly. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Oh, so tell me the truth. Why did you do it? I felt something. Maybe it was the spirit of Agora, I don't know. But it was this irrepressible, undeniable compulsion. I understand. Any other reason? I wanted you to notice me. <laughs> well, it obviously worked. So, have you found what it is you came here seeking? Definitely. Meaning pyrism, of course. Oh, yeah, that too, of course. <laughs> I just wish I would have got here sooner. Uh, from what I hear, I missed all the excitement. Come on, it's not every day that a guy explodes into flames and then confesses all his sins from the grave. I would give him a lot of credits to see that. What I like about you, Brother Tate, is your irreverence. But there are some things you shouldn't joke about. I have to go or I'll be late for assembly. Come and see me tomorrow. Hey, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know, when I was... Uh, Walking on that fire, I think I may have just burned my lip a little. Ah, and you need some balm to soothe them, do you? Something like that. Oh. Sister Nevik, if you're not too busy. Yes, I'm on my way. We'll continue our lessons tomorrow. Sister Nevik has many responsibilities here in the temple. I will not have you interfering with her. Now get out. Touchy. I've uh, isolated a number of different angles. And you patched them through to our contact? Immediately. And no response yet. Everyone else checked out fine. You, uh, you really think there's more to Tate Huxley than meets the eye? No. I think there's less. Lieutenant Brogan, I have received the profile you requested from Interplanetary. The Pyrus Acolyte, Calamandro. About time. It was in there in active file. I have uploaded it onto your screen. Thanks. Oh, well. Brother Calamandro has a past. <laughs> so, before there was a Calamandro, there was an Andrew Callum. And before there was a Pyrist, there was an arsonist. Well, he's been straight for the last 10 years. Yeah, well, that'd explain why it's an interplanetary's dead file. Well, 10 years is also about the amount of time he's been with the temple. Maybe Pyrism helped him change. It happens. Uh, Took, look, uh, maybe it is all miracles and coincidence. I don't think so. I hope I'm wrong. I'm just looking for the truth, Lieutenant. That's all. Brogan, I think you should have a look at this. Uh, you want to translate for me? EPU hieroglyphics were never my strong suit. Well, basically, it means someone's been running an ID check on Tate Huxley. An unauthorized ID check. Which could only be carried out by someone with confidential access. But there's nothing to find, right? Right. 
Tate Huxley is clean as a Tom incubator. So there's no problem? Not yet. We had no choice. Someone's been taking a very strong interest in Tate Huxley. Haldane's been compromised? No. But we think you should be prepared to pull out at a moment's notice. Oh, it's not as easy as you might think. In the first place, Haldane hasn't given me the time of day in over a week. He probably has a reason. I can think of two, and neither one is good. Either he's decided to work alone, or... He's been seduced. Sister Nevik can be very persuasive. Haldane's <laughs> a good cop. He knows what he's doing. Let's hope so. this just yesterday from our dutiful daughter. She says, I'm ready to give up police work and become a beachcomber in New Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> it's Samina's way of giving the old man a hard time. Mm. Well, maybe she's serious. I mean, New Hawaii is a very seductive place. Well, don't you start, Sally. Gee, I don't know, Captain. Haldane tries to go there every chance he gets. Now I am worried. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Haldane been lately? Um, he's, uh, putting in a lot of overtime to pay for his trips to New Hawaii. Mom, dinner's about done. Oh, good. Um, five minutes. <laughs> Need any help? Sure. Okay. You're not gonna tell Fama, are you? I assume you haven't told Sally about Haldane's assignment? Haldane's my partner, not my daughter. I... I don't want to worry her. Oh, so you're gonna do the worrying for two. Not anymore. I've been thinking about Castle's meeting with Samina. It's time to get them out of there. His real name's Jack Haldane. He's with the 88th Precinct. I knew it. Can you provide me the hard copy as well? I can. And I have. Closed door usually means wait until you're invited in. Calamon! He walks in here out of the blue, an instant expert on pyrism. He walks on fire. He quotes the Daskal better than the Icar Vedra. Nice likeness. Wouldn't you say, Officer Haldane? You knew he was a cop. That's why he's here to confess his sins and to embrace pyrism. Or to cover his butt. You're wrong, Brother Calamandro. Maybe it is true I came here under false pretenses, but Sister Nevik has shown me the way. You're a liar. I know what's going on between you two. It's affected your judgment. Of course, your envy hasn't affected your judgment. Please, please, Sister Nevik, Brother Calamandro. The fire has been lit in my heart. I've seen the error of my ways. Now all I want to do is serve you and Pyrism. Please, give me the chance to redeem myself. It's an honor to be invited to accompany you, Sister Nevik. But where are we going? For a little ride, Officer Podney. I don't understand, brother. There is only truth in the fire. All else is lies and deceit. <laughs> you traitor! 
Now he's one of us. 